Brukhama Boyim. Thank you all for coming. Tonight we're going to start a, uh, a series. If you've been listening to my classes over the years, I often refer to a term called gematrias. And um, it's really certain codes. And we'll talk about it today. Today will be an introduction to the whole series of going through numbers and how we look at words in Torah. Again, we'll give you a basic outline, hopefully, and when I finish off the introduction, we'll be set up for getting into a little deeper, the understanding of the mysteries of Torah and the depth of what Torah really is, just not superficially, but pulling back layer after layer. So, as an introduction, uh, Rabbi Shimon said, Woe to the man who says that the Torah merely tells tales and ordinary matters. In fact, all the words of the Torah represent lofty themes and sublime, sublime mysteries. Torah is divine. God and his Torah are one. Every word and letter is a divine revelation to the point that a Torah scroll, in which a mistake has been made by adding or omitting even one single letter, is disqualified for use as a kosher Torah scroll. The stories of the Torah are only the garment of the Torah, as opposed to the Torah itself, as King David said in Tehillim, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your Torah, meaning that which is beneath the garment of the Torah. You know, there are garments which everyone can see. When fools see a person in garments which of them look beautiful, that's it, they look no further. That Torah also has a body, namely the precepts of the Torah, which are called Gufe Torah, the bodies of the Torah, meaning main principles of the Torah, and that body is vested in garments, namely the worldly tales and language of the Torah. The wise see not only the outer garment and the body, but they are aware that the body, the precepts of the letter of the law, is and must be accompanied and complemented by the soul of the Torah. In the Zohar, according to Kabbalah, we learn that there are different levels in understanding the Torah. The first level is referred to as Levush, or Levush Elyon, which translates to mean the outer garment. It, re it, re it relates to the literary form of the Torah, form manifesting itself in human language, and empirical terminology. The second level relates to a clear understanding of the basic intent and the direct message of the Torah as a book of instruction, as I often refer to it, a instruction manual. This aspect is referred to as the goof, the body of the Torah. It expresses the total law's practically, practically relevant interpretations, reasons or meanings of the commandments. The third level, the neshama, the soul, or penimiot, the essence, the core, inner meaning of the Torah, which relates to its esoteric meaning and tradition, the purely spiritual reality and mystical interpretations. And the fourth level refer, refer, relates to the letters of the Torah, their individual forms, and in reality, they are all various combinations. Again, their inner inner relationships and interactions as informing explicit or implicit words. This most esoteric aspect relating to the consonants of the Torah, again the Hebrew alphabet, the letters, as well as the vowels that are underneath or above the marks that tell us how we form these sounds. Notes, again if we sing them when you're in the synagogue, and the crownlets, these little crowns that are on top of the letter. You don't see it in the written Chumash, but you will see it if you ever look into a Sefer Torah, Torah scroll. He is on the level of neshama, lin neshama, uh, the soul of the soul itself. The significance of the fourth level emerges from the realization of the nature of the Hebrew language. For Hebrew is not simply another language. Languages, in reality, are symbols, conventional tools agreed upon by consensus for the purpose of communication. 
Languages thus can, can and do change. Hebrew is different. It is a sacred tongue, a divine language. The individual letters in their combinations are not subjective, conventional symbols. They are objective. Hebrew letters are the means through which physical reality comes into being and manifestations. Just as the Torah was given in the holy tongue, Hebrew, so the world was created with the holy tongue. Again, Hebrew as we call it, Lashon HaKodesh, the holy language. Now the creation of the universe occurred through ten utterances, such as Yehi Or, let there be light, or Yehi Rokia, let there be a firmament. Now the 22 letters of the Torah are the bricks or building blocks by which the universe was created and built. Each letter, different from all others in shape and sound, represents a different emanation of potency. In the ten utterances, we do find all 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. These letters and words can be changed to form new combinations, new words. Words may be formed in different ways. We can simply form new combinations or we can permeate letters in an already formed combination. Or we can substitute letters and already existing word combinations by means of several legitimate systems of alterations and substitutions. What do I mean by that? I refer to it often, often when we talk about something called the Atbash. There is the Atbash, there is the Albam, the Atbach. These are all different ways of learning the Torah, making up words and getting meanings. So the Atbash is the one we use the most. Is the At, is the first letter of the Torah in Aleph, and the last letter of the Torah, a tough, At. Bash is the second letter of the Torah, a Bev, and the second to last letter of the Torah, a Shin, At Bash. 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet, 11 and 11, they can be exchanged, one for the other. And when we exchange them, what we come up with is new words, hidden meanings within the Torah itself that we didn't see before. And sometimes, amazingly, the word tzedakah, which means charity, and as we know, one of the greatest concepts in Judaism is charity, as the Alter Rebbe says, that the Messiah will come through that one mitzvah of giving charity. Charity in the Atbash, tzedakah, is tzedakah. It doesn't change. Because, again, it is constant and so important. An amazing phenomena. But, again, we will touch on these as we go through, hopefully, the understanding of what this is more above. The Torah is the blueprint of the universe, as well as divine instrument for creating the universe. We basically believe that God looked into the Torah and created the universe. So, therefore, the Torah preceded the universe. Of equal significance is the physical text itself, the form or manner of expression, individual words and grammatical structures. Each letter, and indeed the very form and size of each letter, and the titles or crownlets added to them are all charged with sublime significance and subject to care for the study on both the exoteric and esoteric levels. In reality, every letter in the Hebrew alphabet in the Torah is both large and small someplace. And if we look into the Torah, you'll see that they're enlarged when they're written. And again, each one comes with a meaning. Nothing is an accident. Everything teaches us something. There are strict rules, a clearly defined methodology for legitimate interpretation. These rules are themselves part of the Torah revealed to Moshe at Mount Sinai. Everything we have, everything we know, was taught to Moses. And again, it was a gift. In fact, some commentaries say that he was taught the whole Torah every day. And then he forgot it. And finally, on the last day, God gave him this blessing of allowing him to remember. But just to be able to learn the whole Torah in one day is beyond human capability of anyone. That's why we refer to Moshe as the conduit between heaven and earth. Rabbi Shmuel expounded 
pardon me, expanded these, formulate, and these formulated his uh, famous list of what we call the 13 principles, the exegesis, by which the Torah is expounded. If a person, if you uh, pray in the morning, especially out of a Nusach uh sitter, um, just before we say the um, first Kaddish in the morning, the last of the sacrifices that we read, is a list of those 13 ways of which we can interpret the Torah and learn things out. In fact, we know that when Moshe died, according to a tradition, for 30 days they mourned, and at that time they did not study the Torah properly. And some say there were 300, some say 3,000 laws that were lost. And Joshua, Joshua asked God to teach them to him again. And God told Joshua, Yoshua, that the only one who he taught Torah to was Moshe himself. And now he would have to find it himself within the Torah using these 13 principles. Now Rabbi Lezer ben Yose HaGlili explicated these further to compose a list of 32 rules known as the Medrash of the 32 traits. There's another list cited in many of the early works of, which speak of 49 rules. Again, so there are different ways for us to interpret and to understand the Torah. Rabbi Lezer's list mentions gematria as one of the 32 ways of interpretation. In fact, if you go to Pirkei Avot, you'll see that it's considered to be a major concept in Torah, this idea of gematrias. Some people poo-poo it, but everything that we have, all Torah has great meaning and purpose to it. And a person needs to know that. There are different types of gematrios. The numerical number of the word, each individual letter, beginning letters or end letters of words, how many letters or words in a verse or a paragraph, even how many times a word is mentioned in the Torah. All of these things are put together in the same way. Again, and they all teach us something else. Now there is a tradition that the Torah was given at Mount Sinai. And in order for the Jews to receive the Torah, there had to be 600,000 men between the ages of 20 to 60. And these are the basic form of the Torah, that there are 600,000 letters in the Torah. But the truth of the matter is, they have been counted. And the, in that count, they came up with some 350,000 plus letters, not 600. So how do we get to 600? The answer is that not only are there codes and gematrias, but words are put together by combination of other letters. By that I mean, if you take an aleph, the first letter of the Torah, it's really a composite of two yuds and one vav. Again, we'll be talking about it at our next letter, next lecture. Again, giving it a different meaning and a different gematria, a different numerical number. Also, if you, if you look at a ches, how it's written, it's really a combination of a zion and a vav. So all letters, when we look at them, many letters are composites of other letters. So when you have an aleph, you not only do you have one letter, you have three letters. When you have a chet, what you have is two letters. So again, in this way, we can reach this number of 600,000 by virtue of the combination of letters that we have and are written. Not only that, we take words, for example, the sedra of Lech Lecha. Um, Lech Lecha is a miracle value, two letters, two words together of 100. And there are things that we learn from this. The fact that Abraham would be 100 years old when he would have a son. Again, 50 and 50 of numerical value. Also, that he would live another 100 years. That in the book of Lech Lecha, when it begins, he's 75 years old. Things that we learn, again, Gan, the word Gan, garden, has numerical value of 53. There are 53 sedras, portions in the Torah that we, re that we study. All of these things come together. So it, it's very interesting. Again, everybody has a different soul that connects to a different way of understanding Torah and they find fascinating. But for people who have never heard this or for people who, like me, 
where their soul is into this type of understanding, what we call the um, remes, the hints, and the homiletical interpretations of the Torah. This adds a great deal. Just a quick thing before we end, like the word emet, which is truth, has numerical value of 441. 4, 4, and 1 is 9. Multiply 9 times any number, it comes back to 9. Truth never changes. Just a little taste. And God willing, next week, uh, we will continue. And we will break down the letters. We'll start with the letter Aleph. And we'll go through at least, I'm thinking at least the first 30 letters of the Torah. And to see how they connect, where they connect to, what words we get, how we break them down. And hopefully getting a greater appreciation for the depth of the Torah. Again, they say, Shivam Panam the Torah, there are 70 facets of the Torah. The Torah is like a diamond with many different facets to it. And we'll try to get some better understanding, hopefully, by going through this journey of the gematrios of the Torah. Again, thank you very much for coming. God bless and have a good Shabbat.